today we're talking about multi-digit whole number operations. Yeah, uh, last time we talked a little bit about distributive property and what that means. Today we're going to be talking about the commutative property. Real basic uh, understanding of the commutative property is this. If I have a number, let's say 4 times, uh, let's do 8 times 31. Does it, uh, what happens or what does it mean if I designate 31 as the units? 31 as the units. Okay, if I designate 31 as the units, what this means is um, I have eight groups of 31. So I have 31 here, 31 here, and so on, all the way to eight. Okay, what happens if I switch that though? We go back a little bit, and instead, we say that we have eight units. Say we have eight cats, okay? Eight things. What this means is we have eight in each group 31 times. So notice the difference, okay? Notice the difference. So we have that, right? And if we, or, here, I'll, I'll just do another one here. Um, or we can have, let's make this the same size. Okay. Or what we can do is we can have um, 30, 31, right? 31 eight times, right? So it's going to be a little bigger, right? And we have it all the way to eight, right? So eight. Now, what the commutative property says is, whoops, commutative property says it does not matter, right? Are, are these answers going to be different? No, they're the same thing. So it doesn't matter what we put first. That's the commutative property. It says it doesn't matter what we put first. Okay. So now if we get rid of that and we start to think, well, how do we figure out what 8 times 31 means? And this is where I want you to start thinking, how do we do some, some great, some uh, pretty simple mental math? And this is what I want to challenge you to do to start to think like this. Right. So this is all in your brain. So we're going to do this in a nice orange color. Um, so all in your brain, I want you to think. Think about this. Think. We have a problem, 8 times 31. Okay? And if I wrote this out and I have 31 groups of 8, right? All the way to 31. Dot, dot, dot. Because this is all that's in between. So this is 1, 2, right? All the way to 31. I could think, all right, how do I do this? I'm going to do this really quick. But there's an easy way to do this in our head. And this is what I want you to think. I don't want you to do this way. I want you to think about it. I want, to start, I want you to start using your math to the best of your ability. So what happens if we think of this instead as eight groups of 30? Okay, we shrunk it a little. We took one off. Why would eight groups of 30 be easier? Well, because it's got a zero at the end and we're multiplying by tens. Right, so 8 times 30 in our head, 8 times 3 is 24. I add a 0, I have 240. Then I have one more group plus 8. So now I can start to do things in my head, and that's, that's what I want you to get at, right? It's still the same answer. It's still going to be the same answer. We just did it slightly differently, okay? If we did this problem this way, we're still going to get 248, okay? Um, and that's just the way that we can start to do it, and we can think it. All right, so again, the commutative property says, hey guys, guess what? I have a problem. Whoops. I have a problem. 40 times 8. Is that going to be the same as 8 times 40? Yes, it is. So the commutative property says, it doesn't matter. You can switch the numbers around. You're always going to get the same answer. So I hope that kind of helps you uh, with today's work. Um, good luck, and um, hopefully you can figure that out. And we're going to go over it. Um, uh, again uh, very soon.